about like having you to get involved into like more uh, activities or programs and getting summer jobs. I'm very passionate about public transit. And why? <laughs> because it uh, saves the environment and uh, like people of all income levels have a way around. Um, well, I'm kind of upset about the teachers uh, being like laid off. It's like all the young teachers, the seniority pool is just kind of not good. Mayor Nichols is committed, committed to investing in Seattle's youth and encouraging them to engage in their community. Because of this, he created the Mayor's Youth Council to give a youth input on issues that directly impact the youth. Please give a warm welcome to Mayor Nichols. Uh, this is the 8th Annual uh, Youth Town Hall, and this is the 7th uh, Mayor's uh, Youth Council. One of the reasons that that's a smaller number is that one of the first suggestions that we got at the initial town hall was why don't you have a mayor's youth council? Why don't you get young people involved in your administration and get some ideas from us, not just one day a year, but throughout the year. So I want to thank these uh, young folks. They've been working hard all through the year. All right, this is about you. So I want to get people up to the mics and uh, I'm not here to ask a whole bunch of questions. It's really about you and your vantage point and what you want to hear from the mayor and uh, your thoughts and, and how we can improve and your vantage point. So please step to the microphones and let's start getting questions going here. Oh, no, no, we got a question, question here. Okay, good, good. Welcome. Hi. Yeah, thanks for coming up. Some of my teachers at my school have been laid off. Yeah. I know I Seattle City government is doing okay. That's not true for the state government and it's not true for the county government. The schools are getting hit hard because they're the number one expenditure, the number one investment that the state government makes, and the state government had a six billion dollar deficit that they were dealing with this year. So so that is that is bad. Uh, and it's not just Franklin, it's not just Seattle, it's all across the state. And we're gonna have to find a way to recover that because that laying off teachers bigger class sizes means a less good education. We can't afford that when we're competing with all of these economies around the world. Uh, so that's what that is about. And when the economy starts to come back, those teachers will be recalled and, and rehired, and uh, we'll get back on the right track. And, and again, let me, let me give a show of hands. How many of you are worried about the economy, about how, what it's going to do to your ability to get a summer job or a job when you're out of school? Uh, we are, as a city, expanding our summer youth employment program. We want, and so if you are uh, someone who's looking for a summer job, Look on the city's website, Summer Youth Employment Program, S-Y-E-P. Because of uh, President Obama's recovery package, we have a lot of additional jobs that we can offer this summer. Not just with city employment, but with uh, folks that we contract with uh, in, in, in private sector jobs. Let's go right here. Okay, so my brother is in the skateboarding right hand. He was talking about how they're closing down the skate park. So is there any way to prevent the closure or is there any way to build another smaller skate park? Well, uh, I don't know where the skate park is, so I, I don't know what the chances are of keeping it open. So I'll, I'll have to find out some more about that. But we are we, we recently opened a skate park out at Ballard, and it was an interesting conversation. There's some folks in the neighborhood who weren't really excited. They were excited, but they weren't really positive about that. Uh, and now it's there, and, and they're doing just fine with it, and it's well used. We recently opened one at Woodland Park, Lower Woodland, uh, and that's a great one. It's a large uh, skate hole, uh, and I hear, I, I'm not a skate, so I don't know, but I'm told it's a good one. Um, we have one under design for Delridge uh, in southwest Seattle, and we have uh, a plan for having them scattered throughout the city. So we're moving ahead. You know, the budget's been a bit of a problem in Delridge, but we're moving ahead with that one. And uh, so you should have an additional one here in the next couple years. Uh, and then we'll just keep adding small ones and big ones. But the skate bar and I just don't know what that is. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to talk about the violence in Seattle. Uh, you know, and what are you doing to bridge the gap between minority communities 
and the upper and middle class white communities? Uh, both with regard to youth. Go ahead. That's yeah. fine. So that, that's, a, that's a huge question, right? So part of that is youth violence. So let's talk about that first. Uh, the efforts that we're using to reduce youth violence incidents in half are community-based. So we've got three neighborhoods that we're focused on. The central area, southeast Seattle, and southwest Seattle. In the central area, the Urban League, which has been uh, a strong organization in the central area for 100 years, is leading the effort. So they're bringing together community-based organizations, uh, faith communities, uh, police, parents, uh, together to reach out to these kids and get them engaged. Uh, and then we'll have similar efforts in Southeast and Southwest. They're a little further behind, so I can't tell you which agency is going to lead the effort. We're going to have a youth summit uh, in another few, uh, few weeks. Uh, and we're going to have national speakers come in and talk about what other places have done to bridge that gap. Questions. Thank you very much. Question here. Hi, my name is Rachel from Garfield High School. Uh, this is another very different subject. Okay. The proposal uh, to place a fee on plastic bag use in Seattle yes. uh, is going to be on the ballot later this year. Uh -huh. And I was wondering, what is your opinion on introducing a fee versus banning plastic bags outright in the city? Good question. So San Francisco banned plastic bags. And they, they actually were looking at a fee, and the state legislature in California stopped them from putting a fee on it. So we looked at doing the same thing, banning plastic bags. So that means people would use paper, right? They, they'd switch, the immediate switch would be the paper, not to reuse them. Paper bags are four times worse for the environment. Cutting the tree down, hauling it into a mill, putting it through all those chemicals to take the wood and turn it into paper fiber, and then the disposal process is four times worse than plastic. Now plastic is awful because it's terrible in the environment and it ends up getting in the ocean and swallowed by you know, all of these different uh, marine animals and it's ugly. But in fact, if you're looking at greenhouse gas pollution and climate change, paper's worse. And so a 20 cent fee, people, you know, a lot of people can afford that. They may choose to continue to use plastic or paper. But for most people, they'll say, you know what? I bet I could use 360 million disposable bags each year. So if three cities, Seattle sized, reduces their uh, use by 94% like Ireland did, that's a billion bags a year that don't get in the environment. 